Hello! So, if you remember in the last video, we are talking about how to do this thing. We basically said, if we knew what a factor was of our cubic, then we knew that the other thing must be a quadratic, and that meant that we can work with it. Okay, now that's great. Using that method is absolutely great. If it goes improperly, it doesn't help us with anything like remainders, because sometimes you might divide a number. For example, you might divide 7 by 2. Well, 2 doesn't go into 7 exactly. Okay, it's, got, um, it's going to be 3, remainder 1. Right, so in the same way, we could have remainders when we divide three by factors. So this method is great if it goes in exactly. If it doesn't go in exactly, it's got no kind of place. It doesn't help us at all. Right, so what we do here is let's look at this. So what I'm saying there is that x plus two multiplied by something which is a quadratic must equal my cubic. Well, in the same way, let's say two times three equals six. This is basically the same thing I've got there. I've got two things being multiplied together and that equals something on the right hand side. Okay, it's what I've got there. What I can do there is I can divide three by two. OK, so I can rearrange this polynomial up there into, let's just divide through by my factor, my x plus 2. OK, I can work out what my quadratic is going to be. You know, up here I did it by inspection. With this now, I'm going to do it and work out what quadratic is by dividing my cubic by my factor. OK, and you may say, well, fine, but how on earth are you going to do that? I can do it by long division, right? It's exactly the same process as ordinary long division. It's just with x's and stuff, but that's fine, I can do it. So let's take an example. Let's do, I don't know, 225 and let's divide that into five, okay? So let's just remind ourselves how to do long division because most of us do it by short division because we're clever, but let's do it by long division because we're gonna have to do it here. So first things first, I say, right, how many times does five go into two? How many times does five go into two? Well, it doesn't, okay? Two is smaller than five, so it doesn't go in, okay? And then I find the remainder by doing zero multiplied by five. So zero times five is zero. Okay, and I find a remainder by taking the two things away. So what is um, two minus zero? That's gonna be two, isn't it? Okay, and then what I do is the two comes down to join in the, or join in with the fun and games, right? It gets lonely. So uh, basically now what I'm saying is, how many times does five go into 22? Four times, doesn't it? Goes in four times, and then I find the remainder. I times the two together to find the remainder. So I do four times five, to get 20 and I find that the remainder by taking them away is 2 and then the 5 comes down to join in with the fun and games and then what I say finally is how many times does 5 go into 25 when well, it goes in 5 times what's the remainder so I do 5 times 5 which is 25 okay I take them away and I find that the remainder is 0 so it all works out nice and happily in the end so I can basically say then that um, 225 divided by 5 is equal to 45 OK, let's use that as inspiration to work out how to do this thing up here. So, OK, let's try and tackle this thing then. So basically what I've got is I've got my 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 4. And I'm dividing that by my x plus 2. Hmm. OK, so how am I going to do that? Well, basically, all I'm going to look at is my x for the time being. So basically saying, right, how many times does x go into x, 2x cubed, okay? Well, it happily goes in 2x squared times, okay? So basically what I'm saying there is, better way to think about it is, x multiplied by what is gonna give me 2x cubed? It's gonna give me 2x, it's gonna be 2x squared. So um, x goes into 2x cubed, 2x squared times. Does that make sense? Kind of. And then what I do, well, what did I do up here? I've got it over here on my, sort of up here, just to remind us what we're doing. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to multiply to find the remainder. So what is 2x squared? multiplied by my x plus 2. Well, it's going to be 2x cubed, and then I've got to do 2x squared multiplied by 2, so that's going to be plus um, 4x squared, isn't it? And then I take away to find the remainder. Okay, so 2x squared, 2x cubed cancel. Okay, and I get x squared minus 4x squared. That's going to give me minus 3x squared. And the minus 8x comes down to join in with the ride. Okay, so now what I say is how many times does x go into minus 3x squared. So it goes in, well, it goes in minus 3x times. So basically I'm saying there, x goes into minus 3x squared, how many times? Well, I'm gonna have to multiply x by minus 3x to get minus 3x squared. Depends which way you wanna think about it. Okay, so that's what goes up there. So then I say, right, what's minus 3x times that thing? That's how I find the remainder. So I do minus 3x squared um, plus, Sorry, minus 6x. So minus 3x multiplied by x plus 2. That's all I'm doing there. That's how I get that line there. 
and then I have to take away. Now be careful to find the remainder. Now be careful here because I'm taking away negatives. So what is minus 3x squared minus minus 3x squared? Well, they're going to cancel, so it's going to be zero. And then I've got minus 8x minus minus 6x. That's the same as plusing 6x. So that's going to be minus 2x. And then the minus 4 comes down for the right. So then what I'm saying there is how many times does x go into minus 2x? Well, are you happy it goes in minus 2 times? goes in minus two times, okay? Then I just multiply minus two by my x plus two to find the remainder to get minus two x minus four, and I take away to find the remainder, and I find the remainder is zero. So basically what I'm saying there is that my, um, my quadratic is just two x squared minus three x plus two, which as you'll see is exactly the same as what I got up here. And then I just factorize that in the same way, and I get this pretty thing up here.